hello guys and welcome back to the channel so now guys it is funny how people try to reposition themselves on the right side of uh history uh we all recall of course the names are uh, the people that trumpeted buhari into power guys i bring you this we are back to abacha days the army has replaced sars showing how reacts to togate incident so this is now wally shenka of course one of the champions of buhari then in uh, 2014 singing all manners of a uh, reformation of buhari that is a changed character etc anything but jonathan i think uh, anybody in nigeria now will have jonathan back in a heartbeat but now he laments as again we are back to abacha days the army has replaced sars showing her reacts to toll gate incident so now let's not get into the details of uh, what prof has to say nobel laureate wally shoinka has condemned the incident that happened to end sas protesters at the lekki toll gate on the evening of tuesday october the 20th shoinka in a statement released on wednesday october the 21st said his inquiry so far has revealed that governor sawo olu of lagos state did not invite in the army and did not complain of a breakdown in law and order the nobel laureate stated that the federal government has chosen to act in an authoritarian manner and has inflicted a near incurable wound on the psyche of the community shoinka who raised an alarm of nigerian being back to the abata days also alleged that the army has replaced the notorious sars unit so here is now his statement in our full it is absolutely essential to let this government know that the army has now replaced sars in the demonic album of the protesters my inquiry so far indicates that the lagos state governor did not invite the army did not complain of a breakdown in law and order nevertheless the center has chosen to act in an authoritarian manner and has inflicted a near incurable wound on the community psyche need i add that on arrival in abelkuta my hometown i again had to negotiate a roadblock that went smoothly enough i expected it and have no doubt that more are being erected as this has been written c19 has battered the nigerian economy such as it is for over eight months of course it is not easy to bring down c19 under this hill of pellets human lives are easier targets and there are even trophies to flaunt as evidence of victory such as the soaked nigerian flag that one of the victims was wearing at the time of his demise it was a stark contrast to the inclusivity of the protesting family of common cause of earlier days all inherent beauty of instant bonding and solidarity evaporated at the roadblock just before lagos secretariat the protesters proved most recalcitrant. trends in the end the exacted from me just one offering to the rites of passage i could sense it coming i had to come down from the car and address them and i did little did they know what was churning in my mind this is not real this is back to abacha days in grotesque replay convoke town hall meetings as a matter of urgency 24 hours curfew are not the solution take over the security of your people with whatever resources you can rummage substitute community self-policing based on local councils to curb hooligan infiltration and extortionist and destructive opportunism we commiserate with the bereaved and urge state governments to compensate material losses wherever to commence any process of healing at all dare one assume that this is the ultimate destination of desire the army must apologize not merely to the nation but to the global community the facts are indisputable you the army open fire on unarmed civilians there must be a structured restitution and assurance that such aberrations will not again be recorded then both governance and its security arms can commence a meaningful 
lamentably overdue dialogue with society. Do not attempt to dictate dialogue. So this is uh, Professor Wale Shoinka, of course, with his usual pronouncements heavy on grammar, as we have come to expect of him. But the upshot of it is that he's now stating that this is a reverse to the Abacha regime. But then, of course, I uh, beg to disagree with the Honorable Professor. This is not a reverse to the Abacha regime. This is a continuation of the Abacha regime because uh, Buhari had never shown anything other than Abacha like uh, instincts. He has never been any other way. And by the way, Buhari predates Abacha. So Abacha is the bad son of uh, Buhari, and Buhari now is the continuation of uh, what his bad son is. A uh, bad son, metaphorically, of course, is not directly his father. But then, of course, uh, Buhari is a continuation of what Abata has always been. It is brutality. It is Yamutu, effectively. This is the only language that Buhari knows, and this is something that has served him all the way through his life. Yamutu, Yamutu, Yamutu. This is just all he knows. He knows no other way. He cannot engage in conversation. This is a guy when C-19 broke in uh, Nigeria. He hid away in Naso Rock, drinking a camel and taking his medication. When this uh, protest broke, he is again hiding away in Naso Rock, drinking a camel and taking his uh, medication. You have to understand that uh, Malam Buhari is a uh, heavily uh, ill man is a very ill man who is in his 80s and is heavily medicated this is a guy that takes almost a bucket full of medication just to get out of bed and this is a guy that floats in and out of lucidity this is a guy that is not in full possession of his faculties so you cannot really have any real expectations of him any time that you are seeing buhari addressing the co the country in some recorded a video or the other this is under the heavy inducement of very strong medication this is a man that has just gone through one of the most uh uh tasking uh surgeries in uh, uh 2015 and this was a man that was in his 80s then so body is some 84 85 uh, year old type person who is uh heavily medicated I'm very ill. Yeah, we all know that he uh, lost hearing in one ear. We all know that he's unstable on his uh, feet. And we all know that he cannot cohere for any long stretches. So the possibility of this guy addressing the country in a live broadcast is not something that will ever happen because the moment he attempts that, that is the end of this regime. This was why he ran away from the debates at the 2019 uh elections and they just asked uh, yeah, Mahmoud Yakubu to just write some results and declare them winner because of course if uh, Buhari had mounted that rostrum that would be the end of that election because as soon as he says good morning when it's the middle of the evening when it's like 6, 6 p.m. people are already switching off that no we cannot have this and no amount of uh, force could have uh, propelled that so that's why they hid him away from that uh, election debates and that is why he cannot do a live broadcast because they cannot trust him to maintain moments of lucidity for that stretch uh a time uh, to 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 facilitate for that, and uh, because there will be so many cameras there as well, they cannot manage that situation. That is why he continues to hide away. Conversations in the comment section are the prof has spoken. It is back to about a days. What says you? Come share thoughts. But before you come share those thoughts, click on the red subscribe button so it turns gray. The bell button notifies you every time I drop a new video. Click on like as well because that helps with the YouTube algorithm. Once you've done all the clickings, come join me then in the comment section. Come tell me what you are making of what the prof has said. So I'll leave you here. Carry this conversation on with you in the comment section. But here I say peace.